Kitty Van Goop. Booster will start to do its flip and then move into the boost back burn, setting it up for eventual splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Wow! 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 Uh, I <laughs> need a moment to pick my jaw up from the floor because these views are just stunning. Uh, these are live views from Starship. Uh, first stage is currently performing the boost. power and telemetry nominal. Good there, news informing us that the second it's stage or the bad. ship, everything looking good, nominal there. First stage is currently performing the boost back burn, expecting that to last about one minute. Yeah, that's likely just a vent. Everything is looking good for both the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen or the super heavy booster, as well as on the right-hand side of your screen, that is Starship, or we also refer to that as the ship. Oh, baby. So for landing burn, we're going to expect to see the 13 center engines light, rapidly bring down the booster's velocity, and then just the three in the center for splashdown. Let's see if that'll work. Oh, it's getting wobbly. We're getting a few, a few engines. A few engines trying. Oh, no. Oh, I don't think that was... And acquisition of signal. We'll see if we can get some other video of that. Now, uh, this is a test objective today. It is still something that we're attempting to learn. Um, and to make it that far to demonstrate the controlled re-entry up to that point is pretty darn good. Ship continuing to look nominal with its ascent burn. Yes. This burn lasting uh, about six minutes total. Uh, at that point, ship will or, I'm sorry, it actually it already has. Um, engine cut off. Yes! There we go. <laughs> yes! As you heard there by the call out and from the crowd behind us. Starship's six Raptor engines have successfully shut down. We heard a call out for nominal orbital insertion, which is incredible. Look at these views, Dan. Yeah, of all things to go wrong with the ship today, it was the payload bay door. Yeah, the probably the, frankly, it's probably the thing they've spent the less time and the least time engineering because they're probably just like, ah, whatever. <laughs> well, that's like easy, easy beans compared to the rest of this vehicle. Look at the ice buildup up there by the, uh, by the, at the aft end of the ship. On the, to the left of the flap, you can see a big chunk of ice there. On board videos. And so we're hoping that the Starlink on board will let us, just like we're seeing these videos now, see through that plasma field by maintaining a continuous communication lock with the satellites on orbit through the wake that Starship leaves behind. God, now, this is only you. the second time that we're testing Starlink during re-entry. So even though we do have these great visuals now, uh, don't be surprised if we manage to get some signal hiccups through. We're still learning about what that wake will actually look like in practice and whether we're able to get that live continuous high-speed data during re-entry. <laughs> this looks a little tumbly to me. How do you guys think? That looks yeah, that's just... right. And one of the really primary reasons we want to use Starlink is to just gather as much data as possible. It's been said the data is the payload on one of these flights. Uh, where we're just, we're putting this flight hardware in a real flight environment, trying to learn about it. Um, so we've got four of those. And, oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter no the Earth's atmosphere. Way. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing no the work to slow it down. No way! Uh, now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views. Oh the my past. God! Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right 
now it is not. The Starlinks are Views still... brought to you by Starlinks. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Starlinks are still communicating and still <laughs> not uh, capturing this side. the data and the video that we see here. I mean... In their work, we talked about it earlier, uh, up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit that those heat chill tiles are dissipating as we are re-entering. No yeah, now this was one way. of the critical, or, or rather the key uh, mission objectives that we were hoping to hit today. Uh, we have never, like I said before, oh, this is the fastest and furthest that Star Trek has ever flown. So this is the first time that we're getting to collect this re-entry data and understand how these 18,000 hexagonal heat shield tiles are working together to protect the belly of Starship as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. This footage uh, is... Once again, the, the atmosphere is doing us a big favor oh, here by... The this atmosphere is... is actually doing us a huge favor here by acting as a braking system for Starship um, as it re-enters the atmosphere. And that's part of the reason why the flaps are so important. We're using the body of Starship and the drag from the atmosphere to slow us down from orbital speed. But you want the vehicle to remain stable. You want those heat shield tiles pointed down uh, so they can absorb the heat of the Earth's atmosphere um, and set us on phase. Absolutely. So Still have said, data. These views are being provided by uh, a couple Starlink terminals that are, are positioned uh, on Starship They're itself. still getting data. Look As at the speed. As that plasma builds, it, we're hoping that we can bring these views back to you. On the loops, we are making the call now that we have lost ship 28. So uh, as we were possibly expecting, we lost the data a couple of minutes ago. We haven't heard from the ship uh, up until this point. And so the team has made the call that ship uh, has been lost. So no splashdown today. Uh, but again, just in peace. it's incredible to see how much further we got this time around. Before we go, we want to wish SpaceX a very <laughs> happy birthday. The company was founded on this day in 2002 when it basically consisted of this small team, uh, a carpet and no a mariachi way. band. I don't know about you, but we're feeling 22. Also, it's Pi Day. <laughs> <laughs> Yay.